Hello guys, welcome. This is Dr. Ranjit, a consultant pathologist. I am specialized in oncopathology and genetics. Those two are my forte. And we are going to start a series of videos for post-graduates in pathology, a way to diagnose and approach a case, confirm the diagnosis, and also to comment on the prognosis of future aspects of it, right? I wanted to take this for a longer time and we hopefully from now on, daily I'll give one one case whatever comes in the lab and maybe read some more uh, about the pathology in detail in special class at an academy app right i want you to download the academy app if you have and just follow me i'll just we have a whatsapp group as well where i will put the schedule and we can excel in that so today's topic of discussion here is going to be as you say here is siga subependema jane cell astrocytoma right it's one of a very very classical diagnosis it can come as a spotter in your final year md exam as well i'm going to give you just just a brief overview of, of, of this disease so if at all if it comes in an essay question in a theory exam you can di diagnose it you can write it and most importantly i'm going to tell you how to diagnose a case of sika when it comes under a microscope in your practice right so just going with the theoretical aspect first sika is a very very benign whenever i say benign i had in the previous slide also is a who grade 1 tumor right it has to be a benign tumor a very slow growing tumor composed of la large ganglionic astrocytes they look like ganglionic astrocytes this actually gives me a clue this is a tumor which has both glial origin and neuronal origin though i am not exactly sure about the origin of the tumor the precursor origin of the tumor i propose it has both glial and neuronal origin based on the morphology in the microscopy as well as based on the ihc expression right and they arise in the wall of the lateral ventricles whenever you think about sega one syndrome definitely will come into cross your mind which is tuberous sclerosis most of the patients with sega are associated with tuberous sclerosis and if it is a tuberous sclerosis associated case it will be seen at a very early age first two decades of life after 20 to 25 years if it happens it's very very rare if it happens it's going to be a de novo sega right so when you see a patient with uh, sega a subependymal jane cell astrocytoma you are going to evaluate for a tuberous sclerosis next question comes is when do i evaluate like if i have a family history i need it or if i without a family history do i need to evaluate right one important thing about tuberous sclerosis majority of them are sporadic when i say sporadic that might not be any family history so if you see a patient siga it said that who says that up to 60% of siga is sporadic or tuberous sclerosis is sporadic so if whenever you see a patient with siga with or without family history do undergo genetic testing it's very very pertinent it's important don't ignore genetic testing because there is no family history because sporadic thing is very very common in tuberous sclerosis and even if it's sporadic tuberous sclerosis gene tsc2 gene is more commonly involved than tsc1 gene so please evaluate for the entire panel don't go with one gene go for both tsc1 and tsc2 because you should not miss a sporadic case because when it's going to be sporadic tuberous sclerosis again all the symptomatology can come i can be multiple tumors in different organs i'm sure you know about that fine okay we'll see them in one more video about the neural uh, neuro um, tumors and, uh, syndromes involving sinus tumors fine right? okay so coming back to the location as i said that it's going to be in the lateral wall of ventricles generally over the basal ganglia so this location will be given by a radiologist and radiologists will have the uh, hypertense t1 t2 weighted images they'll give a preliminary diagnosis of a siga right and there is one way to say that it's because subependymal nodules is one finding subependymal jane cell astrocytoma is another finding if your radiologist or your hospital has mr spectroscopy by analyzing few proteins like choline and acetylestrase they can say that whether it's a neoplastic mass or just a nodule that also can be told by radiology so you'll have a fairly good idea about radiology one common advice which i like to give to all practicing pathologists is never report any sinus tumor without a radiology because radiology gives me lots of inputs i don't want to miss a sinus tumor especially when you're doing it in a frozen section or a squash cytology radiology is very very important and please consult with the radiologist have a good idea of what is t1 weighted t2 weighted image that might definitely have a better diagnosis for you and approach for the cases fine crossly if i have an excision they are very solid and circumscribed lesion the areas of hemorrhage can be there because they will have vascularity as well now let's go to the microscopy that's what we need for diagnosis right this is a very low power image which came to our case one thing you can see here is even in this low power image one thing you can see is it's a bit elongated right i'll use a different color it's a bit elongated here it's a bit elongated here it's a bit elongated here it's like this is called as fascicles 
I'm sure you must be very comfortable with the patterns you see in microscope. I'm seeing sweeping fascicles. That's a term used in WHO. There'll be sweeping fascicles of cells, a bit of an elongated cells. And as I said, large ganglionic. When I say anything ganglionic, what will be the cytoplasm? Will it be abundant or less? Ganglions will have an abundant cytoplasm, right? You must have seen ganglions in your GIT as well. Any ganglion cell will have an abundant cytoplasm. So this also in microscopy, when I'm going to go to higher power, it will have an abundant cytoplasm. One is sweeping fascicles of spindle shaped cells. You can easily appreciate they are elongated a little bit, for sure, they are elongated. It's a scanner view. Even then, in this, I can appreciate they are very, very elongated, right? So let's go to a higher power diagnosis. The elongation is a clue. The sweeping fascicles is a clue. And we have this in a typical ventricular location. I'm going to think of a subependymal Janssen astrocytoma. This is an image. This is, from, this is not from my archives. It's from a textbook. You have, most of them are like oval cells, round cells. You have the pink color. You won't have the fascicle arrangement here. So it's said that for almost every cancer, please make a diagnosis at low power. A preliminary diagnosis. Patterns can be seen only in a low power. Scanner view 10x. If your microscope has 20x, great. 20x, you should finish the diagnosis. Apply the HLC. Please don't go for 40x. When you go for 40x, everything looks malignant. Everything looks bizarre. Everything looks anaplastic and pleomorphic. Please make a microscope uh, diagnosis on scanner view. 10x, maximum 20x, right? So here, in it's a, this is a higher power image. It will be more oval. It will not be elongated. One thing on a higher power to differentiate from gemstocyte from your subarmidemal genital astrocytoma and the fascicular arrangement will not be here. It said that to call it a gemstocytic astrocytoma, I should have an astrocytic background. It's an astrocytoma in, in which more than 20% gemstocytes will be there. That's all, right? So you have a very easy differential stoma. These are the uh, inputs given in the WHO. They compose of a large plump cells which resemble gemstocytic astrocyte, but they are not gemstocytic astrocyte. We, we know how to differentiate them. And the most important thing is they are in sweeping fascicles, sheets and nests of cells. The fascicular arrangement, like they will be uh, divided by a tiny thin septa, very, very classical here. One important thing I want to add here is whenever you are reporting on a CNS tumor, one thing which will tell me, okay, grade three or grade four tumor is necrosis and your endothelial proliferation, right? Lots of endothelial proliferation. Generally, I bet, get a bit hesitant and say, okay, let's go into a second anaplastic name. If that is not the case in SIGA, please be very careful. Vascular proliferation can be seen in a normal SIGA. That does not mean it's a grade 3 tumor or grade 4 tumor. It's still a grade 1 tumor. When I'm going to say SEGA, subependymal genital cell astrocytoma, it is a grade 1 tumor, irrespective of what I'm going to see in microscopy. Progression to grade 2, grade 3, grade 4 is extremely unlikely. Right? And calcification is common. That's also a finding which can be seen on an imaging, right? Be very careful. Perivascular palisading, clustering of tumor cells, everything is common. Don't mistake them for endothelial proliferation. Don't mistake the vessels for endothelial proliferation and call it a grade 3 tumor, fine? It's WHO grade 1 only, fine? Okay. To prove the low grade benign nature, even if you do a KI61, average KI61 is 3%. Do you think a grade 3 tumor will have a 3% KI61? No, right? So undoubtedly, it's a very low grade tumor as a very good, extremely good prognosis, fine? So I have a preliminary diagnosis on the base on the fascicular arrangement, the spindle-shaped architecture, and the pink, pink uh, cytoplasm. I have a preliminary diagnosis of subependymal Janssen astrocytoma. I have to prove it. As I said that, it's a glioneuronal tumor, right? When I say gemstocytic astrocytoma, it's a glial tumor. It's not a neuronal tumor, right? It's an astrocytoma. Here, it's a glioneuronal tumor. So I have markers for glia, that's GFAP, obviously, and also ascended neuronal markers. That's it's a glioneuronal origin. If you want to, if you're finding it difficult on a morphology to differentiate your gemstocytic astrocytoma, what's a SIGA? Go for markers. Ascended will never be positive in gemstocytic astrocytoma. G will, will be positive in both because both are glial origin. This neuronal is very, very important. And there are primitive neural markers. If your lab has Nestino socks to do them, they also will be positive. So I'm Confirm that it has a neuronal origin for sure based on the morphology as well as based on IHC, fine? So SOX2 might be present in a few of your hospitals. If not, that's not required for me. My morphology and these two markers definitely will be available in any oncopath centers. That should be enough for me to call it subependymal Jane cell astrotema. The Jane cell is the big cell, not the multinuclear cell like what you must already know undergraduates, right? So a GFAP if it's done, it's going to be like this. GFAP is an glial fibrillary acid protein. It's a cytoplasmic marker. You can see them. 
this are my nuclei, right? The cytoplasmic marker. Whenever you are interpreting IHC, two golden rules always have in control. And please make sure if GFAP is a cytoplasmic marker, it should be positive only in the cytoplasm. If it is positive in the nucleus also, I'm going to be hesitant to call it a GFAP positivity. That's one thing you have to keep in mind always, right? The second one is S100. When I say S100, S100 is also positive. Don't call this negative. It's a weak positivity, that's all. Still, it's a cytoplasmic positivity. It's a, it's a stain which is positive in both neuronal tumors and GFAP is positive for glial tumors. That proves it's in gleoneural origin and it's going to be in SEGA. The good thing about SEGA is, as I said, it's a grade one tumor. Excision is more than enough. I can excise the tumor and the prognosis is superb. It, they don't metastasize, they don't aggravate, they don't go to second, third rate tumor, right? So prognosis and follow-up is required. Since the grade one tumor is very good. If a patient is having tuberous sclerosis, as I said that, even without family history, please do a genetic testing. It is required for sure. I need an MRI surveillance every one to three years until age of 25. After 25, even in tuberous sclerosis, SEGA is unlikely. Because as I said, they are primitive cells, a tumor arising from primitive cells. Primitive neural markers are positive, right? So after 20, 25 years, the amount of primitive cells becomes very, very less. So the chance of this tumor developing after 25 years is rare. So my surveillance is required only till 25 years. I need to know this for that genetic testing is must. Don't say, don't be okay with the, when the, the neurosurgeon says that I'm not having a family history. I'm not going to do. You have to do. Please let, make them understand. It has to be done whenever you see a SEGA. If it's not that great, good for the patient very unlikely to be absent. If it is there, follow-up is very, very important. Since it's grade one, again, you have a new tumor, possible excesses. If they are very big, if it's if I'm not able to expose it, excise it, right? If they are big and it's impending the touch structure, and when the neurosurgeon says that that's difficult to excise, every role limits can be tried. They, in operable cases, they do have a good role because it's an mTOR pathway. Tuberous closest gene acts by the mTOR pathway, and suppressing that will have a good effect on the tumor growth and it will make the patient make the patient better if it is not accessible. But but excision is the first and the best way to treat the tube uh, SEGAs, fine? Okay, so today we saw about SEGA. Uh, if you want more of these videos to continue, please do comment on me. And as I said that we are going to have lots of special classes for your uh, PG programs. So do download the Anacademy app and do subscribe to the Anacademy PG section where I'll be adding few videos which I'll be naming it as Pathology Plus which is for postgraduates. I'll be sharing it in my um, Telegram group, Instagram pages and your WhatsApp groups. Fine. Thank you for your time. And whatever new cases you see, do share it with me and we are going to learn together. And let's make sure that we all of us will have become good diagnosticians at the end of the day. Thank you for your time. Bye bye from Dr. Anjit. See you soon with another video. Bye bye.